Hello, my lovely viewers. Welcome again to Mass Money and I. It is your favorite presenter, Jeff Naino, and we are still on the series Circle Geometry. Okay, now if you have been following us from the beginning of the class, you would see that we started with introduction to circle geometry, we also have theorem 1 up to theorem 4. And today in this video, we are looking at theorem 5 in circle geometry. Now, if this is your first time joining us, you're welcome to our channel, but please don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to put on the bell, the notification button, so that each time we give new videos, you will be among the first that would watch it. Now, Mathematics and I is a platform whereby we uh, help students to understand mathematics in a better way and help also to eradicate the phobia for mathematics. Now, um, theorem 5 today talks about angle at the circumference in a semicircle is a right angle. Now, when you say the right angle, it means it's 90 degree. First of all, when you say semicircle, what does it mean? It means half a circle. And we all know that for you to have a semicircle, there must be a diameter. So for theorem 5 to hold or for theorem 5 to work, there must be a diameter in the what? In the circle. Now, what we are going to be learning today in this video is um, how to prove that actually angle at the circumference in a semicircle is 90 degree and also how we can apply this theorem in solving examples. Alright, first of all, let me introduce you to the concept of theorem 5. If we have this as our circle and we say this is the center of the circle, if I draw a line past the center, okay, if I should draw the line past the center of the circle, if I say this is A and this is O and this is B, now line AOB is a diameter. Now, why is like A O B a diameter? It is a diameter because it passes through the center of the circle. Now, because we have a line that divides the circle into two equal parts, it means this place upward is a semicircle and also that one is also a semicircle. Good. Now, how do we form an angle at the circumference in any of the semicircles? Now, let's take a call. Let's draw a call from this point down here. Okay, and then we'll draw another chord down to point B. Sorry. Down to point B. Now, at this door, let's call this C. At point C, another angle is formed. Now, this angle that is formed is at the circumference in this part of the semicircle. And according to the theorem, this angle is 90 degree. It is a right angle. Okay? It is a right angle, which is mean this angle here is 90 degree. And so now, how do we know that this angle is actually a 90 degree? So we are going to prove. Now let us draw another circle to prove this. Now if this is another circle, don't mind the circle, right? And we say this is the center of the circle, and then we have a line, okay, that pass through the center of the circle, and then we say this is line A O B, okay, which is actually a diameter, like we said, and then we draw a chord down to point A, and then we draw another chord down to point B. Now we call this point point C. Now we want to show how this angle here is 90 degrees. First of all, first of all. Line A or B is a straight line. And we know that angles on a straight line is 180 degree. So it means angle A O B is equal to 180 degree. Okay, and then let us go back to theorem 2, which says an angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference. Now, angle at the circumference, let us say the angle at the circumference is x. We don't know because that's what we are trying to prove, that it is 90 degrees. So, if we apply theorem 2, which says angle at the center of the circle, which is 180 degree now, is twice the angle at the circumference, which is x. So, it means we are going to be having this angle at the center now, which is 180 degrees. All right, is equal to two times the angle at the circumference, which is x. 
All right. Now, if we multiply x by 2, we are going to have 2x. So here we have 180 degree is equal to 2x. And of course, if we are looking for x, which is the angle at the circumference, we have to divide both sides by 2. So if 2 should cancel out 2, I have just x left, and 180 divided by 2 gives us 90 degree. So it means if x is 90 degree, it means the angle at the circumference here is 90 degree, which so which sorry, which shows actually that angle at the circumference in a semicircle is 90 degree. Okay, so this is how you can prove that. So now that we have been able to prove it, what do we do next? We are going to solve two examples, and with these examples, we are done with today's class. All right, now, example number one. All right, example number one says, Um, find x in the figure below. Now let's draw the diagram. Uh, this is a circle, sorry, and uh, this is a diameter, which is the center of the circle, and then this is a chord, and then this is another chord. And then we were told that here is x and here is 30 degrees. And now we are told to look for the value of x. Now, what you should understand is this. First of all, the first question you will ask yourself is, what is the name of this line? Is it actually a diameter or not? Now, if you take a look at this question, the line here is a diameter. Because why? It passes through the center of the circle. So it means if the line here is a diameter, automatically the angle at the circumference is 90 degrees according to theorem 5. So if we are now looking for x, we are simply going to apply some of angles in a triangle. Because if here is A and here is B and here is C, ABC is a triangle. And some of angles in a triangle is added up to 180 degrees. So automatically the first angle here, which is x, plus the angle here which is 90 you see, most of the time they won't tell you here is 90 but because here is a diameter it shows here is already 90 according to the theory now plus 90 plus 30 which was actually given is equal to 180 degrees sum of angles in a triangle now of course 90 plus 30 gives us 120 degrees x plus 120 degrees is equal to 180 degrees and we all know that 120 degrees cannot be added to x because they are not like terms. So what do we do? We collect like terms by taking 120 degrees to the right hand side of the equation. And you know that when plus 120 degrees crosses an equality sign, it becomes minus 120 degrees. So here we are going to be left with x is equal to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees. Okay. Now, 180 degrees minus 120 degrees, of course, gives us 60 degrees. So, x is equal to 60 degrees. You see, how simple it could be applying theory 5. So, this is the first question we are solving. Let us take a look at the next example, which is actually the last example for today. Okay. Um... Right, example number two, coming through. Uh, it says find the value of y in the diagram in the diagram below. Right. Now imagine we have a question like this. And we have a diagram, same thing, same process, you understand? And we say here is a diameter, all right? The center of the circle. And then we have a line here. All right. 
And then we were told that here is Y, and we were told that here is 50 degrees. All right. And then we are asked to find the value of Y. Of course, there is no need for them telling you what the value here is. You already know because why? This line is the diameter, so of course the angle at the circumference is 90 degrees. It is simple. You don't need to be told. Okay, so if we should apply some of angles to triangle, it means the first angle we have here is 50 degrees plus y plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, now 50 plus 90 gives us 140 degrees. So we have 140 degrees plus y is equal to 180 degrees. And of course, if we would call it like terms, we are going to be left with y is equal to 180 degrees. If 140 degrees crosses the right hand side of the equation, it becomes minus 140 degrees. And yes, 180 degrees and 140 degrees gives us 40 degrees. So this is how you can apply theorem 5 in solve problems. Okay, so you see how simple circle geometry can be. Now, as I said from the beginning of the class, if this is your first time joining us, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to put on your notification button, and also leave a comment in the comment section. Now, not just on YouTube, we are also uh, on Facebook, Mathematics Booster. Go there, like our page, and also follow us there. And also, we are also on TikTok, Math Not Hot. Math is never hot. Math is only hot when you allow math to be hot. So, with us, you are covered. So, we'll meet again in our next class. Keep on watching Mathematics and I. My name is Jeff Nine, and bye for now.